Odyssey presents The Star Prince. Science has conquered the last inborn defects of the human organism. Engineers in biology and genetics have produced a race of men whose intellects soar above the levels of any previous generation. Each man is his own genius. There are no dull, no stupid, no ignorant in the year 2080, except for a very few. Even within the perfections of modern genetic science, there are the occasional failures, the discards, some who are yet born with intellects that can only crawl while others run. Nice gathering, Morton. Very good of you to have the faculty and research staff over. It's my pleasure. I... I brand. I thought you'd gone to bed long ago. Come in, son. Dr. Calvar, I'd like you to meet my son, Brand. Brand, this is my good friend, Dr. Calvar. I'm glad to know you, Dr. Calvar. It's my pleasure, Brand. Brand, what are you doing here? You were to remain in your room. I just... All right, Mother. It doesn't matter, Arlie. Oh, of course it matters. I told him that he was to stay in his room. That boy never... never I'm sorry, Morton, but perhaps that was a good thing. Most of your friends had never seen a, a retard. It's a shocking experience, even though they knew about Brand. Well, he can't stay locked up forever. That's probably true, but it's unfortunate he chose this particular moment to come out. Tell me, for curiosity's sake, what's his IQ? 140. And the average in this room is about 350. Why did you keep him? He's my son. If you had disposed of him as you should have done, you would have no such confusing thoughts. I don't want to go over all that again tonight. I understand. But we've been friends a long time, and there's one thing I have to say. You're at the end of the road in your career if you keep him around. You have nowhere to go from here. Never so ashamed. Why did he have to come out and let everybody see him? Arlie, there's something I've got to tell you. I've reached a decision. A decision? Calvar opened my eyes tonight. I know what I've got to do. And what's that? I'm not going to destroy Brand because he doesn't fit some pattern the rest of us have decided on. I'm going to give him a life of his own on a planet where he will be accepted for what he is. How? I'm going to take him out to the colonies. Oh, you're insane. What about your career? Brand is worth far more to me than being a biological engineer. And what about me? I sort of hoped you'd go with us. And leave my family and friends whom I've grown up with? Never. Will we find a world where there's a big forest by a lake? That's the way it is on my world. You and your dream world. That's all you've ever talked about. If I didn't know you any better, I'd think it was a real place. Well, it's possible Randor might have an area that looks similar to that. Ha! Huh. Why I agreed to come along with you two, I'll never know. <laughs> Captain Maycock, come in, won't you? Thank you. I can only stay for a minute. Incidentally, I'd like to extend you my gratitude for showing Brand around the ship earlier today. You made it a memorable trip for him. Well, I had my own reason, you see. I had a son like Brand once. What did you do? What I was supposed to do. If only I'd had the courage to do what you're doing. I won't regret it. No, you won't. I wish I were taking you on to Randor, but you'll have to get a rental ship at Illaban. I know. I'll help you pick one. They're mostly junk. There's no control over these operators way out here. I 
didn't know you could pilot a ship, Dad. Can I sit in the other seat? Sure, come on up. These things don't take much piloting. They're pretty automatic. Dad, what's that? Temperature in converter number two. It's going up. What are you doing? Number two engine. Its converter flooded the compartment with hot fuel. I had to dump the whole compartment. Are, are we going to be all right? I don't know. That doesn't leave enough margin to reach Randor, nor to return to Illiban. We've got to make an emergency landing. That planet we noticed on the chart when we took off. You said we'd pass near it. Yes. It was an Earth-type planet, wasn't it? We'll try for it. See how your mother is doing. Sure, Dad. Dad had to dump one of the engines, but he's going to land on another world closer to us. I don't think we're going to land anywhere in this broken-down wreck. If we don't make it, it'll be your fault. We're out here because of you. Don't I have a right to, to try and find my own place, Mom? We're still 200 kilometers out. The number three is going. It'll be a crash landing at best. Dad, that alarm again. Our chances aren't very good, but hang on. We're going to give it a try. lucky we didn't land in the water. Water, yes. You did get your lake and your forest, didn't you? What I want to know is how long do we have to wait here? What did the patrol say? I haven't talked to the patrol. There's no way to talk to them. Or to anyone else. The radio beacon is totally out of commission. Then how do we... You're telling me we're stranded here for the rest of our lives? There's no way out. Oh, there's got to be. You can repair the radio beacon. You can't just say there's no way. I've looked at it, and I'll look at it again. But right now, we've got to make a livable place for ourselves on this world. It's all we've got. Oh, you can't mean that. Alone? No other human beings will die. What's that sound? Maybe we're not alone after all. Have you found Brand yet? No, he must have left early this morning. His tracks are on the beach. They, they go in the direction of the sound we heard last night. I've got to find him. Morton, I don't want anything to happen to you. I'll take a boron gun. That demented son of ours means more to you than I ever did. You're being brutal, Arlie. We must try to survive here together. Help me. Don't fight me. I'm sorry, but it's true. He's become your whole life. I owe him a life. Look, it's Brand coming up the beach. And someone is with him. Give me that gun. Brand, are you all right? Hi, Dad. Yes, yes. Put the gun down. This is my friend, Wark. It was his people we heard last night. Don't you realize they could be hostile? Oh, no, Dad. The Grooks wouldn't hurt me. I knew that last night. They were singing a song of welcome to us. Now, wait a minute. They didn't know who we were, and you couldn't know what they were singing. But I did. I knew. When I met Wark, he told me what was happening. How could he and you tell each other anything? You certainly don't speak the same language. I know, Dad. But he thinks of something, and I know what it is. When I think of something, he knows. We can talk like that, just in our heads, without using any words. Telepathy. Across two different languages. Uh, I don't know what you call it, but that's what we can do. Ah, uh, Banatar de Macuint. Wark says to tell you he's grateful you brought us here. He's been expecting me. I give up. How could he be expecting you? I don't know, but he was. <laughs> You 
You know, Arlie, ever since Bran brought Wark back here, something's been on my mind. What? It's possible Brand will someday marry into these people. His children will grow up here. What's the best thing we could do for them? What does it matter? Don't you see? Eventually, there will be a civilization on this planet. They'll reach out to the stars as we have. What has that to do with us? We can shorten the time of their development by a thousand, by ten thousand years. We can give them the science we carry in our own minds and in the library we brought with us. How? We'll teach them. We'll set up a school. You're very bright students. You've learned our language well. Today we write again. Now, take a dried leaf and use the red paint we made. I want you to write your name. If you've forgotten the letters, I'll help you. They like this. Wark thinks it's fun. Uh, yes? This writing. Why do we do this? Well, uh, suppose you want to tell something to your brother in the next village, but you can't go over there right away. So you write it and have someone take the writing to your brother. <laughs> Quiet, please. Don't leave your seats. We're not through for today. Come back here. Come back this instant. What happened? Why did they laugh at me like that and leave? Wark can tell you. I will try, Mr. Bradwell. It is like... like a joke. Why? What's like a joke? It is so... Uh, how can I say? So stupid. Our message not need dried leaves and funny picture... When I want brother, I think of brother. Then, wherever he is, he knows what I think. Why should I make foolish picture of what I say and carry it to him? But don't you see? I, I can give you so much. I can give you fire and lightning to be your slaves. I can give you the stars. You give too much, Mr. Bradwell. Things we not need or want. The stars light the sky at night, and we know they are great mysteries we can never find out. We have fire which is sacred and should not be used more than necessary. The lightning is terror we not want. I must go now. Goodbye, Mr. Bradwell. Wark, I'll, I'll come with you. What happened? Where is everybody? You were right, Arlie. The Grooks will never be anything but savages. I've got to find a way to repair the radio beacon. Somehow, somehow we must get away. Arlie, I've got some good news. What is it? I took some parts out of the navigation computer and I put... So some... what are you telling me? It's done, Arlie. The beacon is working. Now we can go home. Oh, I didn't believe it would happen. Have you sent a message yet? I've already recorded it. It's set for continuous broadcast. Here, flip the switch. This is Morton Bradwell. Ship disabled. Planet unidentified. Send help. Beacon transmission follows for coordinate plotting. This is Morton Bradwell. Ship disabled. Planet unidentified. Send help. Man's exploration of the universe has touched 10,000 worlds where ways of life and thought conflict with age-old beliefs of Earth. There have been struggles between men who found alien ways attractive and other men who resisted them. But resistance has been necessary if man was not to be swallowed by endless beckoning, imposing, conflicting ways of life. He has had to make sure he remained himself and did not become something less than human or something more.
Morton, Morton, wake up. Huh? Well, listen to that storm. Hmm. Yeah. I'd better have a look around to make sure everything is secure. <sighs> Sounds like it's going to be a big one. Brand, what are you doing in the control room this time of night? It's the night of the Baru. The night of the what? The Baru. The Grooks told me about it. It comes out of the lake on a night like this and destroys villages and people. That must be one of their native legends. We should soon know. Well, if there really is some kind of destructive creature in the lake, why haven't they killed it? That would put them under its spell. They must drive it back to the lake, but they cannot harm it. The ship is rocking. I hope it isn't a hurricane building out there. Dad, look! Turn on the outside lights. There's something on the beach. Why don't you come back to... <gasps> Martin, what is it? It's the Baru. Look at the size of it. You've got to kill it. Get the guns, Brand. I'll open the top hatch. Shoot for the center of the head. Be careful! It's wrapping itself around the ship. It's going to take us over. No, the guns won't do it. I can't believe it. These charges should destroy anything living. Just a minute. Quark is, is telling me something. He says the Gooks never attack the Baru unless it attacks first. But they're going to help us. We're going to do it for me. They've got bows and arrows. They don't think they're going to kill it with those things, do they? Their arrows are painted with something to put the Baru to sleep and drive it back to the water. They must be very careful not to kill it. Look, that man. He's just standing there with his arms in the air. Why doesn't the fool run? That tentacle is wrapping around him. Oh, it's raising him up. There's a mouth. Oh. If they give one man to the Baru, it won't be angry and take revenge on their village. No, oh, they're shooting at the thing. How can they affect the beast when our boron guns wouldn't touch it? Look! See? They aren't having any effect. Let's get below. If the ship goes over... Wait! We... Wait! They're going to shoot again. It won't make any difference. Don't you see? They're shooting to kill this time. They're risking the curse of the Baru to save us. To save me! It's... it's retreating! It's pulling back! was a nightmare I never want to repeat. The beast, is it? Hand me the glasses. Mm-hmm, there it is. Floating dead about a hundred meters out. Oh, what a creature. If only it could be preserved and studied. Where's Brand? No, oh, he left early. He said he was going to see work. <gasps> Martin, that blue light on the panel. Someone has tried to answer our beacon. We must not have heard the alarm in all that racket last night. I'd like to go home, but we still have to think about Brand. Home for us will have to be Randor. Dad, there, there's something I want to tell you. The Grooks have asked me to live with them. I could come back often to see you and Mom. Brand, we had a reply to the beacon. A patrol ship is on the way. When? Less than two weeks. I can't go back. Brand, you have no choice. We'll go on to Randor as we planned. You'll find people there who will understand and accept you. I already have. But, Brand... I think I knew it from the first day we arrived. This is the world I used to dream of. These are my people. And I'm their star prince. You can't make me leave now that I've found it. Martin, what's that noise? I don't know. I'd better check. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, 
going on here? Let go of me. I am sorry, Mr. Bradwell. We cannot let you go. We cannot let you take, Star Prince. You have no right to be in this ship. Get out. We have waited lifetimes for our Star Prince. We not let you take him from us. You can't stop us. Brand, Brand, what's this all about? You, you let them in. I had to. It was the only way. What are they going to do? We're going to the other side of the lake. After the patrol ship has come and gone, you and Mom can come back here. Brand, I can't believe you do this to your own parents. I'm terribly sorry, Dad. Work, come with me. Morton, you heard? Oh, how could he do such a thing to us? They're smashing the beacon. Brand must have showed them where it was. Oh, your loyal, loving, retard son. Harley, don't. Here's where they landed. You can see the indentations of the ship in the sand. Oh, Morton, I... I felt so hopeless having to sit there and listen to them call for us through their amplifiers. I know. It was disheartening to watch them take off, knowing we could have been with them. But I think my biggest disappointment is Brand. Well, let's go inside and straighten up the mess. I'll take a look in the control room. It sounded like they smashed everything. Ali, come here. What is it? The beacon. It's not smashed, but we heard... Brand deceived Wark. Instead of destroying the beacon, he smashed the navigation computer. Brand saved the beacon so we could call a patrol to come back and get us. Oh, he wanted to help us. Morton, that's right outside the ship. Some kind of a ceremony. Oh, look at Brand. They're carrying him around on a platform with a sort of throne on it. So he got what he wanted. He's the star prince at last. Brand. I hoped you'd come. That outfit you're wearing, it's... Uh, it's beautiful. It's the robe and headdress of the Star Prince. It's never been worn before. Oh, Brand, I'm glad you came. You, you look very handsome. I kept them from wrecking the beacon. Did you see? You can still go home. We've already talked to the patrol. They'll be back tomorrow. Thanks, son. I'm glad. I'll come to see you off. Brand, there's something I... I I've got to get back now. They have to do some more ceremonies this afternoon. Dad, you locked the hatch. I, I've, I've got to get out. I'm afraid it's going to stay that way, son. The hatches are on override, and I've hidden the interlock key. When the patrol leaves next time, we're all going to be aboard. Dad, I saved the beacon for you. Now you do this to me? I gave up my life back home so you could have a chance to live yours. I'm not going to throw that chance away on a tribe of savages. You gave up your life? What about mine? My life is here. You have no right to take it from me. Mom. What do you want, Brand? Open the hatch and let me go. G give us both what we want. Well, you heard your father. He has the only key to the system. You can get it. Wouldn't it be worth getting the key so you would never have to bother with me again? Brand, I told you. I've always known how you felt. When I was a little boy, you wanted me dead, didn't you? I know what they do to retards like me. It was Dad who wanted to keep me. Oh, Brand. Do you think I'm any different from you? I'm human, too. I get happy and sad. And I want friends and people who like me. The Grooks like me. It's more than anybody on Earth ever did. More than you ever did. 
Brand, Brand. You wanted me dead. You killed me. I'm human too. I'm human too. Brand, oh Brand. What's the matter? You aren't really going to force Brand to leave. We've been over that enough. And why are you so concerned? Can't you stand him around any longer? I know I deserve that. But listen to me. I, I've, I've changed. How? What are you talking about? I saw him cry. What was he crying about? Himself, his loneliness, his need of love, his total rejection as a human being. Oh, let him stay, Morton. He loves those people, and they love him. It might help if his own mother told him she loved him. Yes. Yes, I could tell him that. I could tell him now. Oh, those savages scare me. Well, they've been wailing and swarming over the beach all afternoon building that pile of rubbish. They aren't even stopping for darkness. We've got to keep watch. They might try something at the last minute to prevent our escape. You'll see soon enough what they're going to do. Brand, I didn't hear you come up. Watch. Brand, just watch. I've been watching. They've constructed two walls close together made of brush and tree branches, but I, I still don't understand. They're setting it afire. What are they doing? Look at that man down there. He's bowing to the rest of the groups and to us. Martin, he's walking into the flames. Oh, Martin! What in the universe does this insanity mean? There's another. He's doing the same thing. You've stolen their star prince. They're offering sacrifice to get him back. Insane. Completely insane. Dad, don't you understand? They're doing it for me. I understand well enough. Great hard disposal chambers. Is our mentality really so much greater than theirs? Dad, listen to me. In your world, I'll always be your shameful retard. Here, I'm Star Prince. Let them all burn. Wark! Wark is going into the flames! Oh, no! Dad, he's doing it for me. Would you ever do as much to help me? You've got to stop them, Morton. I already gave you my life, Brand. I'll do more than any of them. A thousand times more. Remember that, son. Come on. There. I love you, Dad. I love you, Mom. I love you too, my son. Work. I've got to get to him. Oh, thank goodness he reached work in time. The people. Look at them gather around him. They really do love him. He forgot his cape and his headdress. Yes. It'll be something for us to remember the Star Prince by. You must have had a mighty big barbecue back there. It was kind of a celebration. Our son is staying. He was adopted by the local citizens. Uh, we have to report on all missing citizens, and there'll be a lot of paperwork. It's all right. He was only a retard. Is it possible that there really could have been some link across space between Brand and the groups? Some link between his dream of another world and their legend of a star prince? Yes. I think it is possible. I think it just might be true. <laughs>